Hello, everyone. My name is Paige Schrock. I'm a solution consultant with Focus, and today I'm going to walk you through our new budgeting and forecasting tool. So on my screen, you can see our Focus Financial Statements product. I'm looking at the PL. Uh, I've mapped my accounts to different categories and groupings as I want. And then all of this data is updating uh, from my general ledger as new entries are made. So I want to start working on my budgeting process. You can see I've got a budget column here. How do we take those actuals and take data from other areas of focus and transform it into a budget? So to start creating that budget, I go into the budget and forecasting tool directly from financial statements, create a new workbook. So we'll call this my focus budget. Uh, and I get to pick my PL template. So if you have multiple versions of your PL, you can pick which one you want to use for budgeting. I'll just choose this one. You can assign a budget owner uh, or different budget administrators. And I can add levels and groupings as needed. The next step in creating that budget is to pick the budgeting period. So I'm going to do it by month, and I'm going to budget by month for 2021. I could also budget by year. I could do custom budget periods, so quarters or 445 or, or whatever else you might need. And then the final option is how do I populate that budget? I can start with zeros and have a blank slate, or I could bring in a stream of actuals. And if I do that, I then choose my measure. So if you have multiple currencies, you can bring in whichever budgeting currency you want to use uh, and then hit save and finish and my budget will uh, begin to load. So what you'll see is it's in exactly the same format as my, my profit and loss uh, template that we were working with. So it is a one-to-one -one relationship there uh, and everything stays consistent. Here are my uh, line items, my general ledger accounts that I need to budget my workflow section and the lines that I can edit. So anything in yellow I can edit and that's determined by this workflow. So whoever this, this line is assigned to, that's the one, the person who has permission and ability uh, to edit the, the values in that line. Uh, what we do with that is we manage security, we manage version control and, and sort of that workflow management process. So you can have multiple people working in the same budget document at the same time, all seeing the most refreshed and recent data uh, and not having to worry about, about overwriting others' entries uh, because only the person who's assigned can, can uh, enter in the details. So let me walk you through how that works. Let me go to my utilities section using the search bar. I've got these accounts. I wanna assign a couple of these off to the IT manager. Please budget. And we'll assign that to that IT manager. And so you can see the workflow is updated. They're no longer able to edit uh, these items since they're assigned to somebody else. So I'm going to log in as that IT manager. I refresh their home page. What I'll see is that the new budget shows up at the bottom. And I can tell I have two tasks uh, within that budget. So as I log in, a couple of things to note. First of all, uh, the format is similar, but the content is a bit different. So if I expand this, um, this user, this IT manager only has access to see these five accounts. And the reason is that's all the security that they've been granted within uh, the financial statements tool. All of that flows through into budgeting and forecasting as well. Okay, so to clean up this view, I'm gonna click on my tasks. Let's collapse that workflow. You know, part of what we're doing is we are improving that process around managing the workflow and the version control and so on. Part of what we're doing also is to improve the mechanics of budgeting. So how do you actually come up with the numbers? So some of what's gone into the tool is based on what you might be used to in spreadsheet budgeting. So if the landline phones are gonna be $4,000 per month, I can enter that in and just copy it forward. If I want to undo what I've entered, I can hit control Z and everything will roll back to what it was. And so you can see that that's how we leverage, like I said, some of that muscle memory that you might have from working with, uh, with spreadsheet budgeting. So a lot of the, the actual process will feel pretty familiar, not a steep learning curve. But we've also made some improvements. So say I know what my yearly total is gonna be for landlines, uh, it's gonna be $50,000. I can then take that and spread it in multiple different ways. So maybe I want to take last year's actuals and I want to do an increase by a certain percentage. Or maybe I want to take that 50,000 and I want to spread it based on last year's actuals. So based on the proportion of last year's total that fell into, into each period. Um, in this case, I'll just spread it evenly and hit apply. 
Uh, these are all formulas that you can do in spreadsheets, but um, they, you risk corrupting them, takes a little bit of time to enter them. We're really simplifying that process for, for getting that data in. Next thing that we improve on is how do you keep tabs on non-general ledger information that rolls up into a general ledger budget? So I've got this mobile phone line. Maybe my mobile phone's uh, general ledger item is consistent of uh, my phone plans and my, uh, my headsets. So they're, they're non-GL line items that I want to keep track of on my budget. I can come in here and say, all right, phone plans are $4,000 per month, copy that forward, but I'm going to hire some new people in April. So we'll increase it to 5,000 and copy that forward. I can then come in as the IT manager, add a comment, say new hires coming on board. And that comment will travel uh, with that um, with that cell. I can also go back at any point and look at that cell history to see how the numbers changed over time and, and who changed them and when. Let's do the same thing with the headsets. We'll say it's 250 per month and we'll just copy it up forward. And maybe in April with the new hires, it's going to be a thousand. Okay. So once I'm satisfied with my, my budget numbers, I'll highlight my rows and I'll go to submit these back. I'll set here. So I'll submit that back to that focus user. And again, you can see everything updates. I can no longer edit these. If I go back to my focus user, real time, I can see that that's been submitted back to me. So I can now see these new lines uh, that give me some of the detail behind some of the assumptions. I can highlight this and say, accept. Okay, so it's now back to me to make revisions if I want to. Uh, if I'm satisfied, I can mark them as complete. And then at any point, you can always go back and look at how that workflow history progressed, who changed what, who was it assigned to, uh, and then how that line item progressed from that baseline to being a fully completed budget item. So now I'm going to show you a couple of advanced features. So one of the things that we're really proud of is the way that we enable you to work with uh, kind of our robust system for managing drivers. So that is using formulas to update multiple rows or sections of the budget all at once. And I'm going to show you two ways that you might uh, do that to update your sales information. So I'm in a new budget. Uh, this budget has uh, breakdowns by my different countries. So Australia, the UK, and the US. As I expand that, I can see my general ledger items, uh, line items within. Uh, and then I can start applying uh, my budget driver to this line item. So in this case, my budget, my budget driver is the sales headcount. So I create a manual entry driver and I can enter in different variables that I can then update. So for example, I've got my total sales headcount and my new hires, and then I've got a target revenue per person per month and a target margin. So as I enter in uh, the formulas, I start with 10, uh, 10 people in the, in the sales team in January. And then maybe in February, I've got those new hires coming in. So it's going to be last month's total. There we go, last month's total plus the new hires in, in that month. And that creates that formula, copy it forward. And you can see as the new hires come in in February and April, the totals update. And then the same thing there for my target revenue per month and my target margin. These are variables that are then going to impact what I do on the master tab. So we'll come back to that. Now, right now, I've got my different categories grouped by uh, the different areas of the budget. So sales are all grouped together and then broken out by country. And then down below, COGS are grouped together and broken out by country. But I'm not, I'm not stuck to that framework. So if I wanted to swap those, I can do that just by dragging my columns around. Now I can start at the country level. And as I expand, I can see everything for Australia. So those sales and COGS and so on. So it really is up to you how you budget that. So from here, I'm going to punch in my formulas. I already have part of the formula here uh, where you can see looking at the formula for my illumination sales, it's the sales headcount times that target revenue. Now I want you to notice something very important. If you're used to spreadsheet budgeting and you have complicated formulas, you're, you're used to looking at a formula that references rows and cells and columns. 
Um, here, we're making it like human readable. So you can actually see exactly the line item uh, that's being referenced and what's being done to it. So I'll go ahead and I'll copy that, uh, that line forward and scroll down to my cog section and do a similar formula where we say equals you know, the reverse of that margin that I've set and then multiply it by uh, the revenue in that category. You can see that that's updated. Copy that forward as well. As I make changes to uh, to my drivers here, I can make changes to the results on the main tab. So, say I want to increase my target revenue per month to one hundred fifteen thousand. I want to increase my margin target to twenty seven percent. You can see now on the main tab uh, that those values have changed based on the changes I made in that in that driver tab. Okay, so that's one example. The next one is what we call a sales database driver. So one of the things that Focus does really well is we bring in data from all areas of your business. So we've got a sales database that has all your invoice and transactional data uh, indexed and summarized across a lot of different dimensions. So some of those dimensions might be item class and sales rep, and that might be something that you actually want to budget by. You can do that within your sales database. Oh, I'm sorry, within the sales database driver. So here I have a list of all of my sales reps and their performance by different um, product categories or item classes. So I can actually come here and use last year's actuals and say, all right, I want to take, uh, you know, they did 232,000 last year. I want them to hit a 250,000 mark within that item class this year, right? So for that, that's for one particular rep. And I can budget like that, you know, kind of across the board. Because we have the actuals coming in, I can also look at historical comparisons. So this works whether it's sales data or it's you know, financial general ledger data. I can look at the year over year comparisons to see how, uh, how my current budget matches up to uh, those historicals. So let's enter in a very large number so you can see the effect on uh, the other tab very clearly. So that's a very large target. And when I go back to the master tab and I expand that category, you can see several of these accounts are being driven. And within this, um, excuse me, within this illumination uh, total is that illumination for that particular sales rep. Right? So that very large number that I plugged in. Okay. When you're all set with all your budgeting, when you have marked everything is complete, you will then publish back into uh, your budget streams in your finance database. I can add a completely new streams. I can also update existing streams. That gives you the opportunity to analyze the impact of your budget changes midstream as you're still making, uh, as you're still making adjustments to it. You can also maintain multiple uh, budget versions. So if I go into my financial statements database, right now what I'm looking at in the same PL framework is my current and my budget, but my current is my current budget actually. And this is my fiscal 2021 budget. But say I want to compare maybe my existing budget to my new budget. I can just change the stream, select it from the dropdown, and then see all the differences. So at the end of the day, you can actually compare what are my actuals, what's you know budget version one, budget version two, maybe it's a stretch budget, and see all of that side by side. So we really do help on the, on the analytical piece of budgeting as well.